Good afternoon everybody, Contrix Fishing back with another video. Today I'm doing something a little bit different than the usual fishing that goes on on the channel. I bought this new beautiful smoker, it's a Pit Boss Lexington 500 Onyx Edition. It comes with a digital panel to control the temperature while I'm sitting indoors. Um, it does that automatically, which is a lot more convenient than the offset smoker that I was used to. I broke in the pellet grill with some chicken that I made earlier. Um, that thing was absolutely delicious. I used some Nashville hot seasoning. Um, if you haven't watched that video, um, I'll leave the link down below for that short. Um, so now I decided, you know what? The holidays coming up, Eid Mubarak to everybody that celebrates. I'm going to be smoking a brisket. Uh, it's a choice grade brisket, but I made sure it has the best marbling possible. And I'm just going to be using that to my advantage. Um, and I'm going to be smoking it for about 12 to 14 hours overnight. And I thought, you know what, let me walk you guys through the process as well. Uh, it's a pretty lengthy process. It's a long cook, but it's worth it. The end product's amazing. I've made plenty of briskets before, and I'd love to walk you guys through the process. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so here's the Packer brisket that I bought. Uh, Packer usually means that it has both the point and the flat, both parts of the meat attached to one another. The point is usually the fattier end of the brisket. Um, you can see the marbling here. The, the point actually has very large amount of marbling uh, when it comes to the meat to fat ratio. And the point, the point's known for having a little bit less marbling. So when we're trimming this, we wanna be cautious of that. And we want to ensure that we keep a quarter inch of fat on the flat and we take off um, most of the majority of the fat that's on top of the point because it already has so much intramuscular marbling. So I'm going to trim this right now. It's been defrosting from my freezer for a few hours. Um, I want to ensure that it's nice and cold while I do trim it because uh, initially what's going to happen is the fat's gonna be a lot more easier for me to carve. As opposed to if we left this brisket sitting out for even longer, the fat would get mushy and it wouldn't be easy to trim up, basically. So without further ado, let's get into the trimming process. The knife I'm using is a diamond table Damascus steel knife. This thing has treated me well over the last few years. It has a nice edge on it. I just finished sharpening it to ensure that it's as sharp as possible so that I could trim the brisket thoroughly. All right, guys, so we're going to start off here by cutting off any hard pieces of fat like this piece right here. This is actually called the decal. It connects the point to the flat. Um, and you can kind of see nicely where that actually starts. Um, we're going to go ahead and take off any hard pieces of fat as well as some silver skin here because that stuff's not going to render down. So let's begin by doing that. I'm just going to go nice and slow, take my time with it. You want to make sure you're doing this nice and slow so that you don't get much meat. All right, you wanna take it nice and slow. Just start taking off small pieces like that. Just like that. All right, this thing is nice and marbled, so we won't even need to worry about losing fat and losing moisture within the brisket. At the same time, we don't want to create a divot because anywhere where there's a divot in the brisket, the water, I mean, sorry, the moisture will actually pull up and it'll keep us from getting that nice bark that we want. And we do not throw away any of these trimmings. Um, they're great for burgers. So, you know, you definitely want to hold on to these trimmings. Um, I personally love using them within my burgers. So I'm just gonna continue trimming off this hard fat. It looks like there's, there's a nice quarter inch layer there. So we wanna get rid of almost all of that. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way the deco looks now, nice and trimmed up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of the silver skin right here. Alright, 
now we're gonna go ahead and turn it around. There's a big chunk of meat, big chunk of fat right here that needs to go as well. Um, as well as we wanna round it off here. The reason being, we wanna make sure that when we're cooking the brisket, it has an aerodynamic shape so that we can ensure that the smoke goes thoroughly over the meat. We don't want to take too much off, just enough to the point where we feel like it's level with the rest of the point and where it meets the flat. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip the brisket over. So like I mentioned before, this is the choice brisket with very good marbling. Therefore, we wanna ensure we take off almost all the fat on the point and leave a quarter inch on the flat. So let's begin doing that. Again, take it nice and slow. You don't wanna take off too much meat. You wanna make sure that the final yield is nice and uniform. Alright, so I just finished trimming off the point. Um, I did notice that the fat here is less than a quarter inch already. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it across the flat. Um, it seems like it's pretty uniform throughout. So we're gonna leave that on. Now all that's left is to give it that aerodynamic shape. Um, it already seems like it's pretty aerodynamic on that side. However, on this side, we have a few thin pieces here. Um, I feel like these are just gonna end up burning. So I'm gonna go ahead and round it off right here. Alright, so that's our final product right there. Again, we got most of the fat taken off the point, a quarter inch on the flat, um, nice round aerodynamic shape all over. So now all that's left to do is to season it up. Alright, so our brisket's pretty trimmed up and now we're up to the seasoning. Um, this is the one that I went with, this is the Pit Boss Lone Star brisket. Um, it has a nice blend of salt, spices, paprika, garlic, brown sugar. Um, the only thing is it's lacking two things. It's lacking the spice level and it's lacking a little bit in garlic. It doesn't have that much garlic. So what I did is I put it into a container just like this and I added in some garlic powder as well as some uh, Kashmiri chili powder. So it's gonna add a little bit of a kick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season high, uh, get it all over the brisket, but before that, I'm gonna be using my binder, which is just some yellow mustard. It's gonna help the seasoning stick on. Uh, it doesn't provide any flavor, but yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and get this lathered on first. Give your meat a good old rub. That's it. Nice and hot. Hot and spicy meat. <laughs> yeah, boy. All right, so the mustard's lathered on this side. So now we're just gonna go ahead and get our seasoning. Again, season nice and high so that we get even coverage. I know I'm making a mess, but that's gonna be cleaned up later. Just don't tell my mom. Um, just nice and high. Make sure we get nice even coverage here. You wanna make sure you're generous with the seasoning. All right, so once we got the top season, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I get some mustard here on the sides as well. I'm just gonna go ahead in with my hands. Just massage it in. And this is so we can season the sides as well. What I'm actually gonna do to help me season the sides 
get in here with my rub on my hand. It's caking up a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually just manually just stick it on the sides right here, just like that. Same thing, mustard as a binder. Get it where our deco used to be and season oil. All right, so our brisket's nice and seasoned. I added some extra black pepper just for a little bit more of that nice dark rich bark. And now what we're gonna do is let this rest for about half an hour to 40 minutes just to make sure that seasoning can penetrate. Ideally, you'd wanna do this overnight, but just because I'm on a time crunch, um, I'm doing it a little bit earlier. But yeah, now we can go ahead and proceed with letting it rest and we'll get it on the grill in about half an hour. So I'll see you guys then. All right guys, so it's been an hour. Um, I'm gonna get it on the grill in a bit. Before I do that, I'm gonna show you guys this new purchase that I made. This is the temp spike. This is basically a wireless thermometer that connects to my phone. It'll tell me both the ambient temperature of the grill as well as the temperature of the meat. And it's completely wireless. It connects to my phone through an app. Um, I'll show you guys what I'm doing to set it up. So we're gonna go ahead and put it into the thickest part of the point, and we're gonna go ahead and preheat the grill. So let me get that done. Introducing the Thermo Pro Temp Spike, the future of precision cooking at your fingertips. Say goodbye to guesswork and hello to perfectly cooked meals every time. With the Thermo Pro Temp Spike, you're not just cooking, but you're elevating your culinary experience. Featuring a 500 foot ultra long range and Bluetooth connectivity, monitor your meal from anywhere in your home without a single wire in sight. It's one probe, two sensors, meaning that you'll get both meat and ambient temperatures instantly, ensuring your meal is never over or undercooked. Worried about cleanup? The temp spike is waterproof and dishwasher safe, making it convenient as it is revolutionary. The easy to use app puts control in the palm of your hand with custom timer settings, temperature graphs, and USDA recommended presets for a variety of meats. The Thermo Pro Temp Spike, for those who believe in cooking perfection, Transform your grilling, roasting, baking, and more. Experience the difference set eight. Ready to elevate your cooking game? Use the link in the description to get yours now, and for a limited time, enter promo code THERMOPROTEAM at checkout to receive 15% off your purchase. Now let's get back to the video. And we're outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and press the power button. That should start up the cycle. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to set the temperature way down to let's do, we're going to do 180, All right? It's going to be on for a long time. 180 should be the right temp. It's already feeding the pellets into the auger. I can hear them dropping. So I'm going to let this preheat. And I'll check back in with you guys once it hits temperature. All right, so our brisket is on. Getting some nice smoke on there already. This is gonna take a while. I got my thermometer set up. I'll post it right here so you guys can see what's going on with the internal as well as the external. And let's get the cook started. All right guys, so while that's cooking, I decided that I'm gonna show you guys the next step, which is basically what I'm gonna be spritzing with. Briskets tend to dry out, so every hour or so you wanna make sure that you spritz them um, just to keep them moist on the surface. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a combination of apple cider vinegar and water. Uh, a lot of people will use apple juice, a lot of people will use regular vinegar, just anything to keep the moisture in. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pour it into my spray bottle right here. And I'd like doing a 50-50 mix, so I'm gonna approximate it here to the best of my ability. That looks about 
right. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill up the rest with water. And this is what I'm gonna be spritzing with every hour. All right, so we are at hour one. That's what it's looking like. It's a little bit on the dry side. I'm just gonna go ahead and spritz it. Keep it nice and moist. And we'll check back in. Two hour mark. Looking beautiful. Give it another spritz. All right, everybody, we're nearing hour six right now. So far, got that nice, rich mahogany color that we're looking for. It's dry to the touch. So again, we're gonna give it a few spritzes. Next morning. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, pretty good night. Um, I spent every few hours spraying down the brisket. Right now, we're looking at about 156. Uh, it's been that way for the past two hours, which means I'm probably at a temperature stall. And usually what happens when you hit a temperature stall is you wanna make sure you wrap it up and just kind of let, um, let the temperature rise by itself it might take a while but again hey this is a long cook all right so you got to be patient with it so i think right now would be the best time for me to go ahead wrap the brisket up and we're gonna see how it goes from there all right so 10 hours into the cook looking at a nice beautiful bark and it's time to start wrapping all right so at this point um, I'm gonna be using butcher paper to wrap. Uh, I've heard of people using aluminum foil. I've heard of people making a boat out of aluminum foil for the bottom of the brisket. I've heard of people not wrapping at all. You're probably gonna get a hundred different answers. So this is the method that I like going with. It's the most simple. And the reason why I don't like using aluminum foil is because oftentimes what's gonna happen is uh, the aluminum foil is going to ruin the bark because of the sharp edges and the jagged edges. So I honestly wouldn't um, wouldn't want to move forward with that. Rather, I have some butcher paper here. It's nice and delicate and it's pretty pliable too and it holds on to moisture. So I'm going to go ahead and get my brisket on here and we're going to wrap it up. All right, so let's get this thing wrapped up. Love the bark that's set on it so far. We have a little bit of pooling there, but the bark seems like it's pretty uniform all throughout. All right guys, so around here is when my audio decided to cut off on my camera. So I couldn't really do much about that. So we're just gonna go ahead and narrate the rest of the video. So essentially, you want to get that thing back on the grill until it reaches 200 to 205 degrees. And that's what I'm actually going to be checking right here using my meat probe thermometer, uh, instant read thermometer. It's not as accurate, so whatever numbers you see here aren't going to be as accurate as the ones that are showing up on my ThermoPro. Um, but essentially you're looking for two things at this point you're looking for it to reach that 200 to 205 and at the same time what i'm going to be doing here is i'm going to move the probe around and i'm going to see if it's probe tender it should stick in just like butter which at this point it is so i'm ready to take it off i take it off and i'm going to let it rest for at least an hour um just so those juices can get reabsorbed into the meat as much as possible and afterwards we're gonna get ready to cut into it but yeah I'm, I'm so happy with this cook it's turned out pretty perfect so far in the meantime though i want to show you guys a little bit of a quick side dish that i made it's just some quick mac and cheese with a little bit of hickory smoke flavor so i start off by melting about five tablespoons of butter into a pot let that melt up once that's nicely melted, you want to add in about five tablespoons of flour. So we're going equal parts butter and flour. 
And essentially what we're creating here is called a roux. It's basically going to smell like pie dough at this point in your kitchen. Um, you want to get this nice and stirred up. And you want to make sure that it reaches a golden brown color. Uh, cook off any of that raw flour flavor that you're going to get. And we just continue moving this around on a low heat. Next, you want to gradually add in some cold milk, about two to three cups of milk. And the reason why we're doing it gradually a little bit at a time is to ensure that there's no flour clumps. So we just constantly keep moving it around. This is going to transform your roux into a bechamel, which is essentially the base for a lot of white sauces and cuisine. So just constantly keep stirring it around. You want to get rid of all those clumps and you want to cook off that raw flavor again. So just keep going through with it, mixing it around. Once all the milk is added, it should loosen up. And you're gonna go ahead and add in an extra sharp cheddar blend of cheese. And you're just gonna move it around. Again, keeping that sort of medium to low heat to ensure that nothing sticks. And just constantly keep moving it around. And we're also going to add a little bit of mozzarella. Uh, I like adding it for that little bit of a cheese pull. So just constantly keep moving it around and stirring it, letting that cheese melt. And this will be your cheese sauce. It should be nice and velvety smooth. Um, mine looked a little bit lumpy here, but that was just because the cheese didn't melt all the way through. I like to season it up with a little bit of Valentina hot sauce. It adds a little bit of tartness to it, as well as a kick. And for the smoke flavor, I'm using a little bit of hickory wood smoke, liquid smoke actually. Um, just gonna constantly keep moving that, let that cheese continue to melt. You could put this on the smoker to get some more smoke flavor into it, but I feel like the liquid smoke was more than enough. So I'm just gonna constantly keep moving it around and just let it come up to temp. And once I'm happy with the way it looks, I'm gonna add in my macaroni. You could use any pasta that you like. I like going with the elbows just because it's traditional and just stir it up and you're basically done at this point you could take it a little bit further by doing what i do later on which is basically taking it off and i'm gonna go ahead and put it in a foil pan and cover it up with a little bit more cheese just so we could essentially get that initial crust at the top and you're just gonna go ahead dump it in again i'm using the same blends of cheese i'm going cheddar and mozzarella and I'm gonna cover the top and you just want to go ahead and throw this underneath the broiler at the highest setting for about two to three minutes to just let that cheese melt through and get that little bit of browning at the top but yeah that's basically it nice and simple recipe um, you could always add your own twist but this is the side dish that I went to for my briskets so for such a high effort brisket cook, this should not take too long. Um, I prefer that you take your time with the brisket and just find something sweet and simple to do with the side dishes. All right, so at this point, my brisket has rested for about an hour and a half. I really wanted those juices to settle in back into the meat. As you can see, this thing is absolutely leaking with juice. My mom's helping me film, so I apologize for that little <laughs> thumb at the corner right there. But yeah, we're going to go ahead, take it out, and we're going to begin carving into this. I usually like starting off with a piece of the flat. This is my favorite piece to eat. It's the burnt end. It's absolutely delicious. Look at that smoke ring we achieved and that perfectly rendered fat at the top. Just enough to give that piece of flat a little bit of flavor. And the point just slides through like butter. And I can't wait for you guys to see this cross section. It's just absolutely juicing with flavor. Nobody would believe that this is a choice grade brisket. It's just absolutely amazing. You want to take about pencil thick slices off the flat and the point. These things were absolutely amazing. And if you guys are wondering about the tenderness, passes the tenderness test. Both ends meet whenever you put them on an angle like that. 
and at the same time it should just rip apart like butter and that was just the flat check out the point it's just absolutely filled with that rendered fat it's gonna be absolutely delicious i'm honestly looking forward to it nobody would believe that this is a choice grade brisket i don't think anybody would believe it but i got lucky i had a good person pick out my meat and it's just leaking all over the place so again constantly making pencil thick slices here i like using these big slices as opposed to cutting the brisket um horizontally it's just juicing all over the place this grill was absolutely worth it i think that this is going to be a staple within my summer cooking and if you guys enjoy watching content like this be sure to leave a like down below comment something that you want to see me smoke next and i'll absolutely do it it was just so tender so juicy one of the best cooks that i ever have made i'm just gonna finish off by pouring all the juices back into the flat oh my god the footage just speaks by itself like i don't even need to say anything well that's gonna pretty much wrap up this video if you guys enjoyed make sure again to leave a like uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.